The Photos app received a pretty significant update inside of iOS 13 with new ways to edit photos and videos as well as how those memories are presented or relived. And so in this video, we're gonna check out what's new in the Photos app in iOS 13. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Starting off with the updated photos tab, this is how all of your pictures will be presented to you. And as you can see, it looks quite different than before. The new design is meant to put your best photos front and center along with the new view options organized by day, month, and year. Each of the time-based viewing options cuts out clutter like screenshots, photos of receipts, and duplicate images, displaying all of your best memories without all of the crud. Photos are displayed in a tiled view with your best images displayed as large squares surrounded by smaller related photos. So if you go inside of the day tab, photos that you've taken will be organized by each day, obviously. Months will be presented by photos categorized into events, showcasing some of the best moments of that month. And then with the year view, everything is broken down into subsections of each month for that year. Overall, it's a much more streamlined approach and better way of seeing things. And since a lot of the unnecessary photos like receipts and screenshots have been cut out, you'll be able to see a lot of great images and videos from specific locations, concerts, holidays, and much, much more front and center. Speaking of videos and even live photos, that content will be auto-played silently while you're looking through photos in the day view, making your browsing experience much more dynamic and fun. The For You section is also still available, which was introduced last year in iOS 12, and it's still in its own tab, which also shows curated photos, but the Photos tab focuses on specific dates, while For You aggregates content from multiple dates like beach days, different trips, people, pets, etc. One new feature of the For You section specific to your contacts that you have photos of in the People album, and also if you have their birthdays assigned to them in the Contacts app, Apple will show you photos of the person in the For You section of the Photos app on their birthday. Editing a photo or video just got a lot better than ever with the overhauled editing interface, which you can get to by tapping the edit button on photo or videos. Rather than hiding editing tools down at the bottom of the image in a series of small icons, iOS 13 puts them front and center in a new slider that lets you scroll through each adjustment option. It kicks off with the standard auto adjust, but if you swipe to the left on the editing tools, you can choose the specific adjustment that you need. Speaking of those tools, there are tons to choose from, including some new tools like vibrance, white balance, sharpness, and more. For each editing tool, there's a slider that lets you tweak the intensity of the adjustment, which allows for more controlled edits than before. So for example, you can select the exposure adjustment tool to brighten or darken a photo, and then just use the slider to quickly get the desired effect. Intensity has specific numbers, so it's easy to tell how much of the effect that you've applied at a quick glance. The same intensity slider applies for filters too, making filters a lot more functional in iOS 13. Portrait lighting added a new effect called high key mono, which is a black and white effect very similar to the stage light mono, but it also adds a white background instead of a black background. The best part about portrait lighting in iOS 13 has to be the new adjustment tools, which can allow users to tweak the added lighting. It's designed to allow you to adjust the intensity of the lighting, which can drastically change the look of a portrait image. So think about if you're in a studio and they have the lights all around you, kind of like what I do here. Uh, if I wanted to move them back and forth, you would notice the lighting effect would change. So that's pretty much what you're doing with the intensity slider. A lot of the new features that we saw in the photo editor also makes its way to video editing for the first time. Apple offers editing tools to adjust parameters like exposure, contrast, saturation, brightness, and more. Plus, there are built-in filters that you can apply. You can also use the same auto-adjust feature in videos that's long been available for photos to get a quick improvement. As I mentioned before, like the photo editing tools, in the video editor, you'll feature sliders to control the intensity of your adjustments so that you can make dramatic or subtle changes to the lighting, brightness, and other elements. And there continue to be available tools for adjusting video length. Another useful feature, in my opinion, is the ability to change the aspect ratio on the fly by utilizing some of those different aspect ratio options. So for social media, where square videos might perform or look a little better, users can select the square option and the video's aspect ratio will be adjusted automatically. The best part about this is if you decide that you don't like any of these changes you made to your videos, you can actually just revert back to the original footage without losing anything at any time. So let us know what you think of the new Photos app and all of the new updates in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.